All right. Uh, So, um, let's see if there's a good figure here. So for an associative mapping, basically, um, well, in this example, it's actually set associative. So we're we're breaking it up into set. So I can't remember which figure it is. I think it's. I think it's. Um, I think it starts in figure 512. Um, okay, let's take a look at 512 then. Um, yeah, you're right. So uh, like a K-way uh, set associative. So, um, so yeah, the basic idea um, so so for this problem too is basically saying we've got four of these um, um, sets basically. So uh, each block um, up to um, the number of lines that you have maps to um, uh, one of the lines there. Um, and then. Okay, I understand. And there's four sets. So if we have 64 lines, there would be 16 lines in each of those sets. Um, the way I interpret the uh, question two is that there are um, 64 lines actually, um, and, and each line has four sets. So, um, um, so I mean, you, you can definitely have you know, a, a setup like that. Um, um, but, but yeah, so, so it gave you the number of lines and the number of sets. Um, so it is as it says, um, 64 lines or slots divided into a uh, four line set. So. Um, So um, yeah, we, sh we should go over this a little bit um, in more detail, but the basic idea is that um, Uh, I have to 
Just a second. All right, let me remind myself of something here. So, um, Uh, right. So, um, So for a set associative cache, um, um, the basic idea is that, um, uh, so I might be giving away for the question here, but um, so it tells you that we've got 64 lines and we've got four of these uh, different sets here. Um, so corresponding to this picture is we would have, you know, from zero to 63 for 64 lines, and we'd have set zero, one, two, three, and four, um, or zero, one, two, and three for a total of four sets here. Um, so um, and uh, yeah, the basic way that this works is that um, a certain set of blocks and a certain number of blocks in memory uh, can map to one of these lines and, and the number of blocks that, that can go to, or sorry, can map to a particular one of these sets. Um, if, I, if I'm remembering that right. And then, um, so that's gonna be equal to the number of sets. Yeah. Um, And then, um, okay, so let me come back to that one, but um, um, uh, cause I, I kinda wanna go back and, and look at the, talk a little bit about the previous problem set here. It looks like we got a lot of people on now, so I'll we'll probably get formally started here. Um, um, and we'll come back to this one. So, but, but I do think, I don't know if that quite answered your question, but, um, you should be looking at the, you have the right figure. You should be looking at the set associative cache, uh, reading about that. Um, and um, I mean, you know, and, 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 you know, take it for its word as it says there. So there's 64 lines um, and we've got um, uh, four line sets, uh, which, which um, in this terminology, um, maps into, you know, that we have uh, set zero, one, two, and three. So we have four of these basically. So, um, all right, uh, we'll come back to the stuff here too, I think in a little bit more detail here, so. Okay, I think you answered my question, thank you. But, but yeah, I did want to talk some more about the cache, the caching, um, I mean, uh, these things in particular. Um, all right, let me go ahead and get started on um, um, things here today. Um, so yeah, I, I thought, you know, it's been a little bit of the first part kind of going back over problem set four. Um, um, 
I had a few things I wanted to comment on that. Um, and then we'll talk about, um, yeah, the, um, uh, the next assignment, um, some more, and the, uh, the chapter five material here. So um, I don't know if, I, if I'll spend too much time on here. The, uh, let me think. So, so there, there was one, um, one thing for question one that I really did want to point out. Um, so a lot of people uh, answered the second part here. Uh, by going to an argument about um, uh, basically, so, so so it was good. It, it was it was correct. Um, so uh, talking about algorithmic complexity. Okay, so um, so the argument went something like this: that um, um, program A is more efficient than program B because even though the the same number total number of subtractions and multiplications um, and assignments happen. It's just that they're split up into two loops and one loop. Um, uh, the, the, the second one is a little bit more efficient because in this case, we're only doing uh, in comparisons, but in this case we do the in two in comparisons, right? So, so a few people were a little bit sloppy and uh, weren't specifically saying comparisons. They, they were saying, or at least, it would seem that that what you wrote would imply that um, uh, there is two in work versus uh, in amount of work, like like oh a big O, big O of in uh, versus well both of those would be big O of in, but so there was like a, a you know a in amount of work here and then two in twice as much, which isn't quite right. Um, so you know like an easy way to do that is uh, if we want to get into details of this. Um, um, and this would be something like a class on um, on, on algorithms or uh, algorithmic complexity would go over things like this. Um, um, so you'd want to count up the number of operations in here. So, so, so you'd probably have to define things like uh, arithmetic operations as a basic operation. So, you know, we call that one, two for the subtraction, the multiplication, probably also the assignments you'd want to have as, an, as a operation three, four. Um, but also in this case, um, um, since we're talking about caching stuff, it'd be a good idea to think of the loads and the stores as operations or potentially as well. So, so you'd actually have to load uh, memory from, from memory into like a register to get the value, particular value of X and the particular value of Y um, and store that back out to Z. Um, and then here, you know, the, the, depending on how the compiler was written, hopefully it would just load the, the value of Z one more time or, or would even not reload it, would uh, hear that potentially optimize it and um, uh, reuse it instead of having to read it back in after it was stored back out to memory here. Um, but uh, but yeah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't get too much in the details of that, but but uh, if, you, if you count it up like that, um, um, yeah, the, 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 the argument is, is correct as far as it goes, uh, but the only thing that's happening more is, yeah, there's twice as many comparisons and there's also twice as many increments when you have it all in one loop versus when you have it as um, two loops here. Um, and, and so that, that's true as far as it goes. Um, um, so, so A from a algorithmic complexity or computational complexity um, is, is slightly more efficient um, than having um, broken into separate loops here, even though the calculation performed will be the same. Um, but um, um, I didn't get full points for that, although I mean, I'm glad to see that people are remembering, you know, um, uh, previous computer science courses you might have taken um, where you studied things like that. Uh, but um, here, you know, th there's a there's a a more specific answer to what we learned about in um, this chapter here about the uh, uh, locality um, and uh, caching. Okay, so it, it goes something like this. All right, so so, so the, the the issue from um, if, if you look at a caching point of view um, with um, the second version is it could be. So, so imagine that we just got one level of cache 
And that cache might not be big enough to hold all of X and all of Y and all of Z at the same time. So we wouldn't be able to get all of the values of X, Y, and Z um, uh, cached in there, right? So, um, so what would happen on both of these loops is that, um, like, 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 for example, if X was big enough that we could only hold um, uh, ten percent of it um, in cache, um, along with maybe ten percent of Y and ten percent of Z. So, so when we had our first cache mesh, we, we we would we would pull in a block that holds some values for X, which would have some portion of X, maybe ten percent, right? Uh, likewise, we would pull in a portion of Y. Um, and then when we did this multiplication, um, we would also have a portion of Z in cache, right? Uh, but um, um, since this loop is all using the same um, values that are kind of close together in X and Y and Z, once we pull in some portion of X and some portion of Y and some portion of Z, uh, we could do all these, these calculations without, they would all end up being cache hits uh, for some period of time. Um, so we would only have one cache miss where we would have to pull in that block of X, that particular block of Y, and that particular block of Z to do all these calculations, right? And then at some point, th these might go out of scope, and we'd have to pull in another block of, of, a, of, a, of a different set of indexes of X, Y, and Z, um, right? But so if it's broken up into two loops, though, um, the problem is, is that um, um, we would pull in, say, that, that particular block to, to calculate the difference um, uh, for X, Y, and Z. Uh, but then when we move past those um, to um, calculate some other portion of the arrays, X, Y, and Z, uh, th those might get kicked out, right? So, so, so potentially then when we go back to do the second loop, to do the squaring, what would happen is we, uh, we would end up with it with two misses to get that same value of, of X and Y and Z to do the, um, um, you know, so, so we'd have two, one cache miss to get in a, a particular value of, of X or a block of X that contains this and one cache miss and one cache miss here. And then uh, um, a, a second one, um, to get this particular value of Z, okay? So, so I guess really the only, the only issue is Z here. So, so we, we would get Z once in order to do the assignment. Um, and then um, in the second loop, so, so that would maybe get kicked out if, if, if these arrays were big enough. So we would end up um, having a second cache miss for that same value of Z that we want to square and, and assign it back in there, okay? So that, uh, doesn't happen if this all happens um, in uh, where the, the subtraction and the multiplication happen uh, temporally. So this, this is a kind of um, temporal locality here as well, um, since we're doing the calculation together, instead of um, separating them, um, they, they could be quite further apart in time where we do the subtraction versus the multiplication here. Right? So uh, potentially here, um, um, we have one less cache miss uh, for Z, you know, because we could do the subtraction um, and, and Z would still be a hit for, for that block, the, the, those values around this particular of I when we do the squaring of it and putting it in there, right? So that, that's a different argument than, than computational complexity. And, and that's really the, the, the thing that's going on here. Right, and in fact, um, to tell you the truth, so this is a little bit about um, some areas that I do some research on in um, high performance computing and things. So the, 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 the difference in the algorithm, algorithmic complexity here um, is gonna be negligible. That, that's really not gonna cause a problem anywhere else, but the, the amount of, of cache invalidation, uh, so the extra amount of cache misses that might occur from breaking this up versus having this in one loop, that is potentially much more of a significant performance hit. Um, because, you know, I mean, cash misses um, um, really can um, affect performance because each level of memory, like we talked about, um, is, is uh, usually an order of magnitude or more slower than, than the faster level when we have multi-level caching schemes like this. So, um,
but anyway, I just I just wanted to point that out. So 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 people that were kind of making an argument from algorithmic complexity, I mean, you weren't wrong. So that is one reason why um, program B or the snippet B would be a little bit have less performance than A. Uh, but in relationship to this chapter, uh, our materials here, the locality issue is because of potential caching. Um, and by splitting this apart, uh, we lose some of that temporal locality and that potentially causes um, additional cache misses that we won't have um, on this implementation here. Um, all right. So, so yeah, that was one thing I wanted to mention. Um, um, I didn't have much to say about two, three. Um, I was glad to see almost everybody except for two people, I think. Uh, we're using powers of two. I had I'd mentioned that kind of last time. So yeah, for assignments, uh, when we when we talk about units like gigabytes, megabytes, assume that we want you to use the the definitions that are from powers of two instead of powers of ten. So, uh, but but yeah, almost everybody was doing that. But for that one or two people, um, you know, make certain that um, um, uh, unless otherwise stated, um, if, if we're working with kilobytes or megabytes or whatever. Um, you know, so, so a megabyte, um, um, one definition is, um, is, uh, is a 10 to the six uh, power of 10, but, but the other is, you know, 1,024 or, or, uh, or 1K uh, raised to the um, uh, squared, so, or, or two to the power of uh, 20, so. Um, but um, yeah, so most people, most people had um, from three fine. Uh, a lot of people had a particular mistake here, and and again, you know, I'll remind people that uh, um, you're not um, th these assignments are supposed to be individual assignments, so. I, I sometimes let things slide, but I see a lot of similar answers or I see, I see groups of ones that I could come down on. Um, so, you know, don't be surprised, um, you know, so like for the tests, um, I might be a lot more strict um, and then that will really cost you. So, you know, if, if, you're, if you're doing things in groups instead of doing your own work, you know, you might end up getting zero grades on tests and stuff if I decide to uh, come down on that. Because so I really need individual work on these assignments and things. So so anyway, I mean a lot of people for some reason had missed the H here, so you end up with uh, like uh, twelve ninety over thirteen hundred instead of eleven ninety over twelve hundred. So close, but, um, but but yeah, that was a mistake. Um, seemed to have dropped dropped that there, and it looked like it was probably a common source of that error. People um, uh, working together or copying or something. So. Um, yeah, so likewise, um, most people had, I mean, for, for the rest of these, except for the last one here, I mean, I, I didn't, most people had them, I think, or, or, or were pretty close. Um, uh, most people got this one pretty much like correct, um, you know, although again, I saw a lot of repetition on the answer here, um, but, um, but, um, um, anyway, here I, I accepted some kind of variation on five um a little bit um i should probably talk about that um so um i think in this answer we're assuming so there, there's different ways you could define how the timing needs to go um 
when you have like a cache miss. So um, you might just be told directly, this is what the access time is if it's a hit or TC, and this is what the access time is with a miss. Um, and that access time has the, the total access time to do everything, right? Uh, um, the example in our textbook uh, basically says for a miss, you have to do the, uh, the, the, the time to, to transfer the value from the slower memory, and then you have to uh, restart the, um, um, the, the query on the faster memory. So you basically, if it's a miss, you have to add in just one uh, of the, the, the slower memory, the access time, plus then, then you uh, add in the, um, the, the faster memory. And, and that's kind of the, the uh, way that I'd had given as the answer on the previous one. Uh, I'm basing this one um, on, on a slight variation. So, I mean, another way you can think about this is that um, 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 uh, the reason why I added in TC twice um, um, is that um, a, 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 another alternative that you'll see for problems like this to calculate performance on, on cache levels is, is it goes, the, the argument goes something like this. So you first have to check whether it's a hit or a miss. So that's, that's the, the TC. Uh, if it's a miss, then you have to uh, do the uh, transfer time from the slower level memory, which is 2 TM here. And then you have to do TC again because you have to restart um, the, the query um, and, and fetch it. And so now it's been transferred to cache, uh, restart it and refetch it from cache. Okay. So, that, so, 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 you know, sometimes when you see problems done like this, a miss is just, you just have to add uh, the, um, just use the TM. Uh, you're just given the total time uh, that you need to transfer and um, to maybe restart the, the load or, or the, the read or the write from cache, right? Sometimes you just add in TC once. So, so you might use TC plus TM. Um, and sometimes like this, some, some people uh, think of it or, or the way some systems work, you, for a miss, you actually have to add in two times of the, the um, um, fast caching uh, access, right? So um, I probably should have made this clear, uh, or you know, if, if we do any more problems like this where you have to calculate the um, performance for cache levels, um, um, you might want to ask me. You, you should probably, if, if, if you just state, if I, if I forget to say, say it, uh, if you just state your assumption, I'm, I'm using this, um, then, you know, I'm using the, the model where um, if it's a miss, uh, where you first check, uh, and so you have to do a TC to determine that it's a miss, and then uh, you just have to do TM to transfer it in, right? So, so, so for a miss, it's just TC plus TM, right? Um, or, or however you want to state it. So. But yeah, if I give questions like this, like on our midterm or final exam, I should probably go back and look at those and and try and make certain it's explicit um, what you should be doing for, you know, what the time should be uh, considered for if a miss occurs. Um, so, so what the access time is. Hopefully that makes sense. It, it's, um, um, it's a little technical detail, but uh, you know, you'll see it done either of those kind of two or three different ways. Um, when problems are done like this, so. And again, um, most people got question six right, um, although um, here I will note, um, um, there was actually a typo in the question, it was actually a typo in our textbook. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't really make sense that, that, um, that the hard drive is actually faster to access than uh, RAM here, the main memory, or, and even faster than cache. So that's, that's kind of a non nonsensical memory hierarchy. So, so if you have something that's that fast, um, you wouldn't have it below your faster um, memory. So, so you'd be using that directly or using that as a level before these. 
So, um, so yeah, anyway, it's a, it's a typo from our textbook that was supposed to be milliseconds. Um, so, but, but yeah, if you use the numbers and just plug them in, um, you'll get like 26.48 nanoseconds is the um, um, access time for these three different levels. And there are different ways to do this, um, but, um, but yeah, I, I showed one of those last time and I kind of redid that here in the example solution. So, you know, um, from first principles, you can always just um, start at the lowest, you know, the slowest level, determine the effective access time for that level, and then use that as if it's the access time uh, for a combination of that level to, to, to work your way back up um, the, the memory hierarchy to higher levels. Um, All right, and then um, I'll just say a word about um, seven. Um, this was, um, once I got to, to looking at it, this was a little bit more of a um, um, more involved question that I was, than I was thinking at first glance. Not to mention also that uh, this is maybe another mistake from our textbook because it really depends on um, knowing about right through versus um, uh, right back policy, which is, you know, caching stuff, but this isn't uh, actually discussed until chapter five. So, so um, this, this, this question was from chapter four, um, but, uh, but it really should have been kind of in chapter five anyway. Um, so um, I, I kind of scaled back the points on this and, and, and mo most people were given reasonable things and, and um, uh, reasonable ideas on this. And there's probably more than one way um, uh, depending on the assumptions that you make um, about um, how the system is working and what some of these values mean. So, um, so, so this might not be the only way, but, um, but for example, for, uh, just real quickly, um, 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 and we might talk some more about, you know, um, uh, right through and, and um, uh, right back. So, so right, you have a problem in a caching system, uh, if you have multiple CPUs, uh, that's known as the cache coherency problem. Um, and um, so if you have two CPUs and they have separate caches, so, so, so they each have their own private cache, but of course, uh, when you have a multi-CPU system, um, um, uh, they're all gonna be, used the, be using the same shared memory. Um, so, so when, when you have levels of caches that are private, that are specific to a CPU, uh, that causes a problem uh, known as cache coherency problem. Um, and, um, and, and, and right back versus right through are two ways to um, solve it. So um, right through uh, means that um, th this, is, this is very inefficient, uh, but, it, but it's very easy to implement. So basically, for every time you access your cache, if you're if you're doing a write to the cache, uh, you always uh, just um, write it both in the cache, but but you write it through. So you you write it also back to main memory. Okay. So in that case, every time you're doing a write uh, for a write through policy, you don't get any advantage from the cache. So so a write takes. Uh, you know, essentially, it, it's you have to go to the slower memory every time whenever you're doing a write if you're using a write through policy. Right, so you only get the performance benefits when you're doing reads, right? Um, and and that's fair enough because um, often you do more reads than writes in typical data processing. Uh, but still, the, the, but but there will be a, a fair amount of writes, and, and all of those are going to require that you essentially have to use the slower access time. So that that can greatly degrade your performance. So, um, so the idea on like th this expression, um, again, I, I think I, I got this one um, um, from my own thoughts, but it was pretty similar, if not the same as um, um, some solutions. So, so the idea is that, um, you know, the expression is gonna look basically the same here, uh, where here I, I was interpreting TB to be, um, 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 so in the setup to the question, um, uh, 
uh, we give TV and, and, you know, I, I'll agree. This is another thing. Um, I might go back and have to revise this, this question, but they're implying that, that uh, by, by defining uh, TV to be something from TM, that the TV must be like, like the total of, of um, everything you have to do to transfer the block uh, between cache and main memory and then use the value that was originally needed. So, so that, was, that was kind of how I was interpreting uh, TB here, um, even though, you know, I, I'll agree that, that um, uh, now that I go back and look at this question, um, it could have been clearer, but, um, uh, but that, that's kind of implied that, you know, why would you define this uh, when you already have TM and TC? So, so, so TB must be something like um, um, the, um, the total time that you need to transfer um, um, uh, when you have a miss uh, to get it to cache and then to use that value that you needed for the miss originally, right? So, so, so anyway, for, for, for part A, uh, I mean, this is the, the equation that we've been using where we assume TB is something like TM plus TC or maybe TM plus two TCs, depending on um, how you might think that, that you need to add up those times uh, whenever you have a miss to, to transfer the value and then use it um, in cache. So, but then here, for, for right through, you need to add some expression. W, uh, this, this definitely makes more sense. So, so W is just the ratio of the writes um, as you're given for, for part A here. The, so the fraction of write references, right? So regardless of whether something is a hit or a miss, for all that fraction of things that are write references, you're going to have to, um, um, access them from main memory, okay? So, so that, that's kind of what this expression is doing here. Um, and again, uh, the, the details of how much time that takes. So this is an expression that's supposed to be how much time it takes whenever you, extra time it takes that's not included in this portion whenever you have a write. And, and again, it, it will depend on how you interpret these on uh, what you would think of as the time. So, so one thing here you can, you can say is, um, Like in this expression, we're saying that the time you need that's additional for a write that, that's not included um, in the original expression um, is um, it, it's like TB, but we're removing the TC out of it. So, so we only have to transfer the, the block to memory. So, so the argument for that is that um, 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 for a write, um, uh, we can think of it as, you know, we know it doesn't, we, we're not going to have to check whether it's a hit or a miss. So for a write, we're just going to kind of like simultaneously write the value to cache and then also write it out to um, uh, main memory, right? So, um, So um, yeah, and, and the reason why it's the minus TC because, because you know we, we already are taking into account um, that we had to check cache uh, in in the portion here. So so we're we're trying not to double dip out of that. So so um, um, and, and again, you know, like I said, yeah, the, the, you, you could come up with some other expressions um, here that would be valid. It would depend on your assumptions on. Um, uh, kind of how the, the, the system works um, uh, and, and what needs to be done or redone uh, for a miss and a hit and things like that. Um, Okay, and then and then for right uh, back. So I mean, this is what's normally used for um, modern systems for for caching, uh, because you know th this can uh, the the right through can be pretty inefficient, um, and and systems you know this is much more important nowadays where we have multi core systems. Um, but uh, this is more complicated. So the idea is though is that you have to keep track of um, of. Um, whether a, a line or a block has been modified or not. Um, and then you only write it out um, 
when you're about to kick that block out of cash, right? So, so basically what you do is you keep an extra bit for every one of your lines in the cash. Um, and anytime something is modified in that line, you'll, you'll set that bit called the dirty bit or the use bit to be one. Um, and then at some point, you know, and, you, know, and, and, uh, you, should, you should have been learning about how caching works well, in more detail this week, right? So, so, so you have a problem. The cache has a limited amount of space. Once it becomes full, uh, if I need to bring in something else in the cache, I have to kick something out. I have to select something to be kicked out. So for the, the right back policy, uh, when I select something to be kicked out, I'll, I'll check that modify bit. Um, and if, if it's been modified, um, I, I'll first have to write it back out to main memory before I can kick it out and load in something new into that line into cache, right? Um, so anyway, I mean, if you understand that, the again, um, the idea then to do this problem would be to, um, um, you know, the, the system is gonna be pretty much the same, but we wanna add in some extra terms that would, uh, um, um, account for um, um, the extra time that you need uh, for that right back uh, policy. So, um, so again, if WB is the probability that a cache line has been altered, basically with that probability, I have to do some extra work. And then um, it becomes a question of, um, of um, how do you describe the amount of extra time that I have to do um, um, uh, whenever it that, that cache line has been altered and and, and um, um, has to be uh, returned back, written back to memory before I can uh, um, kick it out and, and replace it with something else. So, um, so yeah, I mean the basic argument is that uh, basically only for misses. So, so um, 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 only when misses occur, am I going to potentially have to make a replacement? So, so the, 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 the amount of work that we do is a function of um, um, uh, the, the probability that something is dirty, that a line is dirty, um, and, and, and the probability that a miss has occurred, or, or, or you know, the, the, um, yeah, the, 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 the ratio of times that misses are occurring, which is 1 minus h here. Uh, and then some time, um, so like for example, uh, TB, the, the the total time to um, uh, write that value back out, um, transferred to main memory. So. Um, all right, so I spent more on that than I wanted to. Like I said, um, 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 I, I ended up kind of, uh, just take it, just considering that as a little bit more extra. Um, um, so after you've done the stuff this week, uh, you'll understand some more about about right through and right back, and and um, um, you know like uh, cash coherency and some other things. So. Um, all right, somebody was asking about um, yeah. Um, 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 I haven't gone back over, um, so you know I'm, I'm going to change the evaluations on assignment three. But but uh, those will happen sometime. So yeah, but but yeah, they haven't happened yet. Um, okay, um, I'm going to take a like a quick break here. Um, Unless somebody has a, um, a question about the previous problem set here that they might want to ask about. Um, but uh, I'll probably take about five minutes here um, and then we'll start talking about um, uh, the caching materials from our chapter five here. All right. Go ahead. Okay, um, let me go ahead and get started again. Um, so I think I wanted to maybe talk about um, a few things about in chapter five first. Um, 
I was going to mention there are some uh, nice simulations, uh, but uh, I, ju I just checked them um, and they might be having problems, unfortunately. So I don't know if this is transient or not. Um, I'll, I've, uh, I'll, I'll have to check this after the class, um, but uh, these would be good things to use uh, when you're working on your assignments, um, but I think they're having some problems at the moment. Uh, I'll, have to, I, I, I'll check those links again, see if there's an alternative. Yeah, I mean, these are going all the way back to the eighth edition of the book. Um, so I don't know if they've updated those somewhere or not. So anyway. Um, Um, so I, I mostly want to get, maybe talk just a little bit about some of the details of, of, of how caching works here for a bit. Uh, just, uh, you know, again, to, to help out with the assignments, uh, the, the assignment for this week in particular questions. Um, Hopefully everybody understands, you know, the, the basic issue here, um, you know, after uh, reading through our chapter uh, of our textbook. Um, so, you know, cache is much smaller than main memory. Um, so we can only hold uh, a few things at a time in cache typically. So, so cache is faster than, than main memory, uh, but it's going to be much smaller. So, so we have to, you um, um, be selective about what we can do. So, so and, and we've already talked about, so um, we normally um, load in uh, what's known as like a block um, from main memory into cache. So, so we, we never have a cache where we only do one item at a time. That would, uh, wouldn't would work because of the principle of locality. We, we want to, cache is all about um, exploiting the principle of locality you know, so whenever we need a particular thing we don't have in cache, we want to get that thing from main memory, but we want to get things around it. So, so we'll, we'll transfer a whole block uh, because um, typically the, the one thing we need is going to be local to other things we're going to need pretty soon um, as well, right? So that's, that's a, a fundamental thing is what uh, uh, property of the cache is what the block size is, All right? Um, so, you know, K could be 16 words or, um, you know, 64 words, or um, I don't know what's, um, I'm, I'm sure they talk about it in our chapter five here, but um, I was trying to think of what some typical kinds of um, line sizes are. So these are also called lines, um, um, uh, one block here, um, 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 in a particular line number. Um, but uh, oh, and and you know, uh, for the for um, typical systems nowadays, they, nowadays there'll be multiple levels of cache. Um, oh, if there's a better picture here, um, but um, but they, I mean, three is typical. Um, so so like um, on this one, uh, you know, this is an older Pentium four. Um, but you know, this is indicating the um, uh, the total size of the cache uh, at each one of these levels. So a megabyte here at level three, down to sixteen kilobytes uh, at level one. But but this doesn't tell what the actual block size is, although it's probably described in the text here, I suppose. So, anyway. um, So anyway, that, that's a fundamental property is, is the, the number of words in a block. Each line holds one block then. Um, and we, we only have so, so many number of lines, okay? So, so we can only, um, 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 and, and you know, the, the total of this is gonna be uh, much less, right? So the total capacity of, um, 
of the cache here is going to be k times uh, c. So if you know if we have c lines, you know using the the um, um, the values given in this figure here, we have c lines and k words. So so c times k is going to be the total number of words, which is typically a byte. Okay. So again, uh, we're using we're, we're mostly just assuming that all word sizes for our computer architectures are one byte or eight bits. Right? So each one of these in main memory, um, uh, each word is, is typically uh, a single byte of information. Um, So, um, so there has to be some sort of a mapping between um, um, where we're going to take a block of memory. Um, so, um, so yeah, the, 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 it gives a few more definitions here. So, so, so a block um, is sometimes referred to as a frame when we're talking about it in actual physical memory. Uh, but but uh, uh, generically, it's a block. Um, so the block size between the two me two memory levels um, has to be defined to be the same here. Um, so you know, and then a line holds a block plus extra information. So in particular, it has to hold information. So we can do the mapping. Um, um, uh, so you know, so so. In, so in particular, like if we have a memory reference, we have to have some way to, to be able to determine, okay, is that a hit or a miss? So that's part of what this tag and other information is in here. So, so we have to know, you know, so if, if I want the value at memory address three, um, that's going to be in block zero of main memory. So, so do I have block zero in my cache, right? So, um, so as I'm kind of hinting at there, there's a, a simplest kind of thing is a tag might just be the block number. So, so the first K words you can think of as block zero. Um, and then um, you know, where K is our block length. And then the next K would be block one and so on. And, and we might use that as our tag. Um, so we could look that up. Um, So, and yeah, but there could be other control bits, um, you know, like dirty bit, like we talked about and other things like that. Um, so, I mean, if, if you know those numbers, you, you can um, um, answer all these kinds of questions, you know, like, um, 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 how the mappings will work and things like that. So, um, so yeah. Anyway, this I mean this is important. So because there's more blocks than lines, there's many more of these blocks typically than we've got um, lines that can store them. Um, like they say, M, small M is much, much smaller than, than big M. You know, so M is the number of blocks in main memory, and little M is uh, here is kind of the number of blocks, uh, number of lines that we have. Um, so I guess they use different notations sometimes in the textbook. So either C or little M here. Um, Uh, anyway, so I'm going to kind of skip over these things because I mostly want to talk about um, 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 this, the, these kinds of. Um, of information about uh, the different ways that, that uh, caches uh, might be accessed. 
Um, so there's, there's, there's three main ways that we'll talk about. Um, so direct mapped and fully associative are kind of two ends of the spectrum. And then set associative, and you think of it as sort of a, a, a bit of a middle ground, a kind of a combination uh, of these two here. Um, so direct map um, is, is the easiest um, uh, to understand. So um, um, but um, so, so it's the simplest um, and, and, and can be the simplest to implement because of its uh, um, uh, some, uh, because of the simplicity of the way it works. Uh, but it, but um, uh, it, it can have some performance, you know, might not be as good uh, uh, performance wise um, as a associative type of a cache. So typically associative caches are used rather than direct mapping. Um, so direct mapping, each of the blocks in memory um, maps to only one possible cache line, okay? So, and, and typically the way it works, um, um, so, so this is trying to describe this. So, so here, to understand this, so this isn't the way that we, that we uh, visualize memory usually or, or in the previous figure. So here we've got memory, but we're actually showing the first uh, M blocks of memory. So if we have, um, 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 M, M lines, um, so, so, you know, if this is main memory here, um, this is supposed to represent whatever our block size is. So let, let's say blocks are um, um, 64 words or 64 bytes, right? So this, is, this, this first block is actually the first 64 bytes of memory. So, so memory address zero through 64. And then block one would be the next block after that. So, so memory address of zero to 60, memory address um, 64 to uh, 127. If, we're, if we were using uh, 64 bytes for each for our block size, right? So for direct mapping, um, each block uh, maps to one particular line. Okay, so we only show the first m blocks, but then after that, so, so the block, uh, um, uh, the mth block. Um, so again, so, I mean, you know, it might be easier to just put numbers in here. So, so like if we have. Uh, 16 lines, so, so if M is 16, uh, then, then our first 16 blocks of memory, um, each one of those maps to one particular line. So block zero um, maps to line zero, block one to line one, uh, down to block 15 maps to um, uh, line 15 in cache, right? And then after that, block 16, you know, wraps back around. So uh, that's where the modulo comes in that it talks about. So. So, you know, if, if I have 16 lines um, and, and when M is 16, that's going to map back to line zero. And then block 17 would go to line one and so on. And that mapping is important because basically um, um, only one of those blocks at a time can actually be in cache, right? And so you know that, that if I have a miss, I know exactly, if I have a miss and I need to, um, uh, pull in block uh, zero. So if I have a reference to some value in block zero in memory um, and it's not currently loaded, whatever is in line zero needs to be kicked out um, and then I'm going to bring in the block zero, right? So um, right off, I'm, I might be jumping ahead here, but um, um, so one big performance problem for that is if I write a program that just happens to be referencing something uh, repeatedly that's in block zero, but also something that's in block um, 16, assuming that we're using 16 lines here. Um, you know, let, let's say it, it, it's in a loop and it keeps reading a value from block zero and then writing the value back out to block 16. 
uh, there's an immediate problem because, you know, um, um, when I reference the thing for block zero, um, it'll get loaded into to line zero. And then I, 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 I might immediately reference something on block 16 that also maps to line zero. So I'd have to kick out block zero, write it back out so I could load in block 16. Um, and then, you know, but, but then if I have to use something for block zero again, the same thing happens. I'd have to kick out uh, the block 16, write it back out if it was dirty um, and, and load back in the block zero. Right. So, so there's a potential um, um, for that kind of um, um, uh, problem. Um, might not be too likely, but um, uh, you know, it would depend on lots of factors, but, but, uh, but that kind of thing can happen um, where I have a program that's referencing two things that happen to be in different blocks, but that map to the same line for a direct mapping caching scheme. And that can cause quite a bit of inefficiency. Um, and, and another problem is that um, um, I might be using a bunch of blocks, uh, but it might be that I'm not using any block that maps to, um, you know, right now that maps to line one or whatever, right? So, so the kind of the reverse of that is that uh, sometimes these lines aren't being used very much right now because none of my programs are using a particular block of memory that maps to that line, right? So, so you, you can potentially have some blocks that are kind of in some contention because you've got a program or multiple programs that are using blocks that map to the same line from the direct mapping. Um, and then vice versa, um, it can be that some line um, um, is, uh, there, there's no block that's currently map, being mapped to a line. So, so some lines are going unused in the cache, right? Um, so those, those are some kind of some drawbacks for direct mapping. Um, so, um, for an associative, fully associative, I think of fully associative as uh, this works kind of like uh, hashing. If you know what hashing um, uh, is in um, like a like a, uh, a hash table a type of data structure um, or a type of way of creating like a dictionary. Um, So yeah, I mean, the basic idea is that for a fully associative, each block of main memory can map to any line, uh, to, to any cache line, right? So here, um, this potentially solves both of those problems, right? So, so since we have no direct mapping, we're gonna have no problem with a potential collision where I need two blocks that map to the same line. Uh, right now for the same program or for two programs that are running um, at the same time right now. Um, and also, you know, I, I might not have any lines that are being underused um, uh, currently um, because I can potentially use, so any block can potentially map to any line for fully uh, associative uh, cache here. Um, So the um, the um, the issue for the associative mapping is that. Um, I mean, direct mapping, if, if you read all the stuff I just scrolled past here, uh, is very simple to implement in um, the, uh, the, the, the chip logic, the integrated circuit logic. Um, because, yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically just a modulus of the, um, uh, the, the, the block number by the, you know, the, the number of lines that we have to figure out which line um, any particular ref memory reference uh, maps to. So, so, so it's very simple to, to implement the logic of that. Um, but for associative mapping, um, 
you essentially have to keep um, like the block number in the tag portion. Um, and, and then you can think of it. So, um, um, I mean, naively, if I have a reference to something, I, I, I would know which block number it's in. Right. Uh, and so I, I could search the tags. But if, if you had to search, do like a linear search through all these tags each time, um, because, you, I mean, you don't know which line it might potentially be in. Right. So, so the, the naive approach would be like like a linear search. Right. So I just uh, uh, search through every one of these tags uh, to see whether the particular block number that I need is, is in that line or, you know, for a hit or it's not. Uh, in which case it's a miss and I'm going to have to um, potentially uh, go out to main memory and transfer it in the cache thing, right? Uh, but um, of course, uh, like a linear search would be um, uh, very inefficient and that's not the way it's normally done. So uh, basically some sort of a parallel, parallel um, circuit is designed so that, um, you know, so, so it, so basically, so that I can search every one of these uh, simultaneously. So I know which block number I want. Uh, we can present the block number to the circuit that determines uh, whether that whether uh, a line contains that block or not. Um, and all of them will come up with an answer simultaneously. Um, um, and and yeah, I mean you know, and and the answer will be you know either. We'll, we'll figure out which line it is that has the block if, if it's a hit um, or um, it'll be a miss and, and, and that would um, come up at a different part of the uh, circuit logic. So, um, so that, that's oversimplifying a lot, um, but um, um, I mean, that, that's kind of what it comes down to. And, and um, um, the, and the difficulty for that, for the, the, the chip logic, um, like I've already described is that, um, um, I mean, that, that doesn't make it much more complex uh, to um, be making your determination for a hit or a miss, right? Plus you also have uh, more complexity in, um, um, yeah, I, I should discuss this as well. So on the flip side, um, if we do have a miss, we're gonna have to bring in um, a block from memory um, and potentially then, you know, cache is gonna full. So the, the, the normal state of cache is to be full. So since cache is much smaller than main memory, typically very quickly it fills up. And then from then on, um, as you're running your system, cache is just pretty much always full or, or uh, uh, close to being completely full. Um, so whenever a miss occurs um, uh, for an associative cache, um, I have to make a decision. I have to select one of the lines to remove, uh, to, to be kicked out so that I can load in the block um, into that line um, that, um, uh, that we just had a miss for, right? So, you know, again, good, you know, think back, I, I didn't mention this for the direct mapping, but for direct mapping, uh, when you have a uh, miss, Again, there's no real decision about which line to kick out. You know, since, since a block maps to one and only one line, if I do have a miss, I know exactly which line I'm going to have to kick out um, and then load with that newly referenced block that was that, that, that was just missed. So, so the um, um, the logic for a miss um, um, is much more complex, um, and we have to get into what are known as line replacement schemes or or uh, page replacement schemes here. So, so it it makes a it can make a, a huge difference on performance um, which line I select to kick out. Right. So one thing you might use in the decision, you might want to prefer to kick out things that aren't modified. So you might want to look at that dirty bit and try and select something that's not modified. Because if you kick out something that's not modified, you don't have to first write it back out before you can load in something, right? So that's that's part of your replacement decision. But the other thing is, is that you wanna try and make a good guess of, of trying to select a line whose data is not likely to be used um, 
real soon, right? So if I kick something out and then it immediately, the, 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 the next uh, memory reference needs something for that line I just kicked out, I'm gonna have to load it back in again. Um, so there's various um, algorithms for trying to predict which is a good line um, to select to be kicked out, right? Um, I'm, I'm sure these are discussed in here. Um, so you can use something simple like a first in first out, or you can try and use uh, something more complex like least recently used. But all those the, the decisions for the line replacement um, all add a lot of complexity um, for this the associated uh, caching scheme here. So. Um, So, um, so yeah, I, I mean, again, I encourage you guys to, to use these simulations, but, um, but yeah, unfortunately, I, I, you know, soon be working. I was going to try and do them today here, but, um, um, but yeah, I'll check that after class because those are really useful um, for better understanding these things. So. Um, All right, so set associative is, is kind of um, um, in between, um, and um, if. If I remember right, I mean, a lot of modern CPUs uh, uh, use some version of like a set associative mapping. So, um, So, so yeah, this is one way that 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 um, associative can work. So, um, in this case, um, that there's there, there's a combination of direct mapping and associative mapping um, that occurs, right? So, um, uh, so like block zero is always, each one of these blocks is always going to be mapped uh, directly, but not to a single line, but to a single set for set associative, right? Um, so like what this is showing here, uh, um, so like I, I think for our second problem that somebody was asking about that I was discussing at, at the start here, um, there, was a, there was something like four uh, sets, right? So in that case, um, um, you know, like block zero would always be mapped to be somewhere in the set zero, but, but then the set zero acts as an associative uh, memory, so so it, it can be mapped to any one of these particular lines um, for set zero. Um, you know, and then likewise for you know a, a block uh, one would always go to set one, block two would go to set two, and so on, right? Um, and then, so let, let's say we had four sets, like I think was in um, the, uh, the the second problem. So in that case, then you know block one, block zero would, would go here. You know one would go set one, two set two, three set three, and then block three would map to set zero again. So it wraps back around, right? Um, So um, this, this displays some of the properties of both the direct and the um, associative mapping, right? So uh, we, are, we are flexible. So, so we, have, we have multiple, only, only a certain subset of things. So every fourth, if there's four sets, only every fourth block uh, can end up being set zero. So uh, we can use part of the bits of the address to figure out which set it has to be in, right? But then within that set, we have to use what I was talking about, the, the associative. Uh, so, so we will have to have the, the logic um, then to, um, uh, you know, to look it up, basically, uh, you know, so um, at worst case, you, you can think of that as like a linear search, but we'd, we'd have to somehow search through the tags 
um, if I'm looking for a particular block um, to see if it's currently in that set or not. So, right. Um, So, um, oh, and, and I'm only described that there's actually two kind of ways. Yeah, forget about this. So there, there's there's two kinds of ways that um, um, you can sort of combine um, an associative cache and a direct cache. So, so the other is is uh, kind of reversing that. So, so the 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 K direct map caches um, 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 is similar, but but uh, uh, in this case. Um, Each block maps to one particular line, um, and uh, yeah, our textbook calls these ways instead of sets here. Uh, but um, um, so blocks in 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 this variation, block zero would always end up being mapped to line zero, like like direct mapping, and block one to line one, and and then so on. And and again, and, and again, all these ways would have an equal number of um, of of uh, lines, right? So if we had um, um, 16 lines, the first uh, 15 blocks would always be mapped um, to those lines, and then block 16 would, would wrap around and, and map back to line zero. But we have multiple of these, right? So, so the, in this case, they act again as kind of an associative memory. Um, so you know, if if it if it turns out that way one um, um, is, is holding um, you know, way one line zero is holding block zero. And, and I need to um, access um, um, the, the block that wrapped around, let's, let's say that there's 16 uh, lines here. So uh, in that case, if I need to access block zero and block uh, 16, I could have block zero here in the way one, and I could have block 16 at line zero for way two, right? And then if I have four ways, I could potentially have four different ones that map to line zero uh, in each of those four, and not until I have all four of those line zeros filled up. Um, you know, so in that case, if I need like a fifth one that maps to line zero, I would then have to make a decision of which one of these to kick out. Um, um, uh, below that in there. Um, um, so, yeah, I think if I remember, I need to go back and, and kind of review, but um, um, this is this is relatively common. The kind of this uh, K-way sets or uh, um, uh, uh, direct map caches uh, like this. Right? So it's a little bit associative. Um, so so it alleviates some of the problems of the direct mapping that we talked about. Right. So since I have four of these, I, I can instead of having uh, only one. Um, line zero that, that multiple things might map to and, and that there might be some contention for. And I got four of these. So uh, as long as I don't have four things that, that all map to line zero active at the same time, um, I won't have any kind of contention or thrashing um, occurring. Um, All right, so yeah, that was, um, I mean, of course, there's a lot more detail, but that was um, um, kind of the, I think the most important things to, to, to understand. Let's go back and look at the assignment side then a bit. So, um, so yeah, if, if anytime somebody, uh, if 
there we're going to either refer to it as a direct cash or an associative cash. But if 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 anytime somebody calls it set associative, um, that's going to be one of those um, um, alternatives. Um, so. Um, So um, let's see if I stated it right or not when I was talking about it initially. Um, so for problem two, we're talking about um, 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 so, um, so I might have misstated it before. So, so this one um, is talking about the first version of that. So for the uh, set of associative cash, uh, um, uh, so we're, we're talking about that, that we have uh, 64 lines um, um, and, and we've got basically four uh, line sets. So what that means there, if, if that's confusing, but there's basically four sets. Uh, for this first version of the, the set of social cash here. Um, so it looks like this, where we've got uh, uh, four of these sets, so set zero, one, two, and three. Um, and uh, each one of those sets has 64 lines. So again, in that, um, in that version, you know, um, um, block zero is going to map to set zero, so it could end up in any one of those 64 lines. Um, and then block four, um, so it says there's four sets, every fourth set um, um, gets associated with set zero. So block four would, would go in there and so on. Right. So um, yeah, in this problem, the um, uh, we're using uh, 4K. Uh, or, sorry, we're using 128 as the as the block size. So, so 100, 128 bytes or 128 words um, is our is our block size. And, and so the total amount of memory in this case, uh, I mean that it's not 4K is the total amount of memory. There's four uh, kilobyte. 4K of blocks. So you have to ask, multiply that times 128 to find out what the total main memory size is. So. Um, Um, okay. So 
So I believe I, I was trying to, to, to um, um, make a determination of um, uh, for three. So, so I believe then that, that when we talk about the two-way um, set associative, um, this is um, um, we'll refer to kind of the second scheme uh, uh, here in, in the figure 5.12, so. Um, and, you know, the, the bit, it, basically, you know, kind of the giveaway is that um, our textbook uses kind of sets when it's talking about um, um, the, the associative mapped, uh, and then, but then it kind of calls these ways when it uses kind of this direct map. Or K, or K way. So, um, Okay, um, yeah, so let's see if there's anything else um, on the assignment. Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully that um, if you get straight the um, the direct and the associative and then the um, um, uh, set associative sort of variations, um, that should be the, the main things that you would need for the fifth assignment here, I think. Um, Let's um, let, let me take um, uh, the, the, let me see if, if anybody has any questions. Let me know. So maybe to try to go into anything in, in a little bit more detail. I'm going to take a little break here. Um, see if there's some more questions. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to try and try again. See if I can um, uh, find those um, simulations. Um, but um, but yeah. Um, 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 if I can't, that might be about all we'll do here. So, uh, but why don't we take a little break? Um, I'll come back in five minutes here and then see if, if we can do those simulations or if we'll do those at a different time. So, all right. Okay. Um, yeah, I haven't been able to successfully find a good version of that um, um, passion simulator, which is unfortunate. Uh, maybe hopefully it's just a transient thing. Uh, but I'm going to send an email 
um, to the uh, site. Uh, see or see if I can find an alternative uh, location for that. So, um, so yeah, normally when you use this, um, you get the actual simulation over here. So. Anyway, um, I think um, unless anybody wants to ask um, some questions, some more questions about Simon Five or anything, I can clear clear up anything. Um, but um, uh, I don't think I'm going to go over anything else in detail. Um, okay, um, so let's go ahead and end the session then for today. Um, and um, and uh, I'll, I'll try, like I said, I'll, I'll post an announcement about the simulator if I find anything more about that, because it is useful um, for uh, uh, understanding and, and for doing the questions too. So, um, but uh, yeah, or send, send me questions by email um, if if you had some more things didn't want to ask here or, or later on as you're working on the assignment five. Um, and yeah, that's it for tonight. I'll see you guys later then.